So let's do a comparison of some of these miniatures with Warhammer miniatures, as well as the Alethi miniatures that I have from my army. So here we have the Alethi Spearmen versus one of my Alethi Spearmen. Right off the bat, I love um, the detail on this guy compared to this guy. This was just generic miniature from Gripping Beast Miniatures, like one of the Saxons multi-plastic model kit. It's worked well for my Spearmen so far, but I've needed a different look. They don't look quite right, and this guy looks great. And he kind of matches up. Well, I guess we'll see. Look, compared to Warhammer, he is a tall man, and the Alethi were tall people. So this could work. This guy could work. The only issue is his base size. This guy's on a 25 millimeter base size. And this guy, let me see. He's on about a 30, what is that, 32? Yes, this is a 32 mil base. And so that's about the size of this guy. So he fits well into slightly bigger humans, which is all right because they're lethe. Uh, the Barsendi, same deal. Slightly bigger. Um, Archers. This is a Perry Miniatures War of the Roses Archer compared to an Alethi Archer. Again, the height difference is starkly different. Um, base sizes. So what that tells me is that it's going to be difficult to run the Alethi and the Parsendi as kind of battlefield troops, or core units, because their base sizes are slightly off from what I'm looking for. However, if I do a corn army, these guys could fit great. However, how am I gonna get 50 or so of these guys on the tabletop? I don't have a printer. I don't see myself getting a 3D printer anytime soon. And they only have two poses, really boring army. Hopefully they come out with some more miniatures, more poses for this guy. Doing another comparison, here's one of the main characters, Kaladin. Versus one of my Warhammer guys that I kind of kit bashed together. Um, they're almost the same height. Well, I guess, yeah, about the same height. But the base size, the stances. Okay, here's one of my leaders in my Lethe army compared to Kaladin. So, they're, I mean, they're close enough. You can make it work put them side by side and then here's a dungeon Dungeons and Dragons miniature I got from my brother-in-law compared to Yasna no Navani excuse me about the same size she could work well as a sorceress model all right the interesting comparison I have here is I use this guy for Adolin shard bear during the tournament that I played with my Lithi army Adolin in real life, the, the real Adolin is about the same size. So this is awesome because I see this guy going toe to toe with the Stormcast Eternal, which is what this model is. And it's great, great size comparison. So if you are interested in making a, let's say a shard bearer army, go with Stormcast Eternals because the models look like this and looking from far away, they look very similar. Um, looking up close, yeah, you can see some differences. I've had that idea of creating a shard bearer army, and that could be interesting. Before the the recurrence, I forgot what it's called, where everyone broke their oaths, it could be kind of cool to see what an army of shard bearers would look like. Um, comparing bulkiness, I mentioned in the other earlier, the bulkiness of this model is not up to what I was expecting, and you can totally see that this guy's just thicker. Like, I expect Kaladin and Shardplate to be thick. Let's actually compare him to himself. So this is Kaladin without Shardplate, with Shardplate. Well, I guess, because it kind of checks out. I did want to show you this. This is one of the newest models that Games Workshop has produced. And the quality of these miniatures is really good. Granted, these miniatures come on plastic sprues and so you, you glue the pieces together and so they can get really detailed about each individual piece. But the details are fantastic. And if I compare that to, let's say, this guy. 
Um, Warhammer is heroic scale. So you see the Warhammer model on the left, his head is bigger than Adolin's, as well as his hands, right? His hands and arms. And so that, and his feet, and that just lends to a thicker model, more detail. Um, but surprisingly, these are pretty close. It's just the faces, the hands, and the feet that really are lacking on the Stormlight Miniatures. Um, and the one that we've all been waiting for, geez, this thing is like really heavy. I didn't, like, it's heavy. I wonder if this is like solid resin. So we've got that Chasm Fiend compared to my Chasm Fiend. So here's this guy compared to this guy. So if, if the Starlight miniature stretched out, you could be about the same size. I do think mine is, this model's bigger. But this is really interesting because I could see this model fitting on this size of base, which is a Mega Gargant base, which is how you could run a Chasm Fiend and Warhammer. You could totally feel this as a Mega Gargant. Just get a slightly bigger base. You see the base sizes here. But just the top view already, they're very comparable. I might have to start playing Mega Gargants and just run a bunch of Chasm Fiends. Well, hope you enjoy that comparison of size. Overall, I think these could fit really well into a Warhammer army. So if you have an itch to get these on the table in a massive scale battle, um, check out my other videos of creating your own Alethi army. Be on the lookout for my next video. I hope to start putting out painting tutorials very soon. Be sure to subscribe. All right.